This is Dumb Down Life number 108. Under the 
And that was Rob Warren with the song Rise. You can get more from Rob Rob, Rob Warren at robwarrenmusic.bandcamp.com. Good evening, Lance. Good evening, Darren. So, it's the last show then. Uh, apparently so, yes. Um, Shame that. I knew uh, nothing about this until I saw your tweet earlier. <laughs> well, it's the last show. Um, we won't be recording any more. And uh, even if we were, there wouldn't be anyone around to listen anymore because tomorrow is the end of the world. Well, that's not strictly true. There would still be people around to hear us. There would? Yes. <laughs> Go on. Well, I did a little bit of searching once because everybody kept tweeting all day with hash rapture. I'm like, <laughs> what the hell's this? And it turned out the hell's this is actually quite accurate. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, apparently what's going to happen tomorrow is um, it's the second coming of Christ and he's going to come down and um, all the the um, the saved, the, the um, people that will go to heaven, um, they will get caught up, which is where the word rapture comes from. That's apparently what it means. Um, and they will be taken up to heaven and all those that aren't saved will be left on earth. Now, they will be left on earth until... Apparently the twenty first of October. Oh, oh, okay. Um, and then they will all be dragged in, into hell. So we could keep going until October because I'm fairly certain that neither you nor I will make it into heaven. Yeah, that's actually oh, fair enough. Sorry, then in that case, yes, it is not going to be the uh, the last podcast. Although going by our previous tra- uh, track record, <laughs> I wouldn't say there's going to be many more between now and, and October. So, so, if rapture is when everybody ascends, or you know, all, all the nice people ascend, then what's what's the October one called? Is that just the end of days? Is it or uh, at the end of the world? Yeah, <laughs> just the end of the. It's the end of the world as we know it. And I feel <laughs> fine. <laughs> but then this happens I, I, I think uh, every three or four years there's a it's going to be the end of the world I think year 2000 planes but, were going to fall out of the sky yeah and the millennium computers was were gonna going stop to be and, one um, apparently the same guy the American pastor can't think of his name but the one that's sort of shouting about this happening now also said it in 1994 oh right <laughs> um, and he got around that one by um saying, well, that was the first part of it. That was when um, Christ has come back to Earth. And apparently he's sort of been bumming around for the last 10 years, um, or a bit longer than 10 years, 15 years or whatever it is. Um, and now he's going to, the, the rapture will start where he's, I guess he's been sort of auditing us for the last 15 years. So so was he like born um, in 1994 and now he's going to be some angry um teenager no 94 yeah, you would be a teenager wouldn't he um, 17 yeah so about 17 <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh the, the the savior is a 17 year old oh my god <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> yeah um but and that wasn't what i was going to talk about and as usual we've just waffled into something <laughs> You know, every now and then I get um, a little annoyed by how silly people can be. Um, I think the last time I got wound up was by this guy who was trying to prove that perpetual motion is possible, (laughs) um, but couldn't do it unless he was given enough money to prove it. Oh, is this that professor guy with the rings? With the the rings, yes, and and everything, the the rings and the magnets, and it was like, no matter how many times he was asked, how does this work, he would just bring out some mumbo jumbo and just completely wind everybody up. Um, of course, you don't understand it. You're a scientist. Was his <laughs> was his yeah. common answer to it? It's like ha, ah. but um, somebody has has wound me up again today. Um, there is a problem, um, especially around big towns and big cities uh, where haulage companies go through the cities. This problem um, is that when a, a, a lorry is, is, is in a built-up area and is at a junction and wants to turn left, 
if there is a space down the inside where that lorry needs to, to be able to, to go round, if anybody pulls into that space, be it a motorcyclist or um, a bicyclist, bicyclist? That sounds a bit Bicyclist. <laughs> bicyclist, a cyclist, um, or a pedestrian stands there or whatever, there is a large area down the side of the lorry where the driver cannot see. Yes. And a lot of times it, it has been fatal where a lorry has turned left because obviously in the UK we drive on the left um, and the cyclist is just trapped and then is, is, is caught under the wheels of the lorry and, and it's often fatal. Um, if they get away from it, they're, they're, they're lucky. Um, now, there are laws about lorries having to have a certain array of mirrors that help them to see what's down beside them. Um, but even still, these mirrors um, still leave blind spots. And also, being as they are mirrors, they're, they're sort of given to vibration and, and movement. And because they're vibrating, they're not necessarily obvious when there's something appears in the mirror. Especially if it's a cyclist. Especially if it's a cyclist. I mean, if, if something's vibrating, you're possibly ignoring it because it's catching the light and vibrating. And then when the cyclist pulls into the spot, you're, you're, you're in trouble. Now, quite why it's taken so long for this idea to come up, I don't know, but I'm glad it has. Uh, a company <laughs> has devised a system which works similar to the reversing um, sonar that you get on the back of a car. Yeah. And it sits down by the, the side of the truck, and then as something comes up alongside it, you get the beep, 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 beep to warn the driver that there's somebody there. This is also then backed up with a camera on that same spot that's looking down the side of the, the, the Arctic unit, and they can see pretty much everything without having to use the mirrors on a little display on their dashboard. So far, so good, yes? Yes. So they showed you how this works on the BBC on a nice little video, and then they had um, a representative for the Road Haulage Association shoot it down in flames. What she said was that this was reliant too heavily on technology. This was just another distraction that the driver doesn't need. And I was a little annoyed by this. Well, for a start, too reliant on... No, sorry, it's another piece of technology. Um, have you seen inside a modern haulage <laughs> truck... <laughs> I'm thinking that this woman possibly hasn't. <laughs> well, my brother-in-law happens to be a truck driver. Yeah. Um, and bizarrely, I've just come back from the pub and we've just had this conversation. <laughs> um, and um, he says it's a good idea if it works. Uh, but he, he didn't elaborate why, but he doesn't think it's going to make an awful lot of difference. The problem is that with with any of these things, if they are regulated, then if the, the driver gets in and it's not working, he's supposed to refuse to drive the truck. Yes. But if he refuses to drive the truck, then he loses a day's pay. Yes. So he's more than likely going to drive with that thing broken despite it being illegal. So then when, because that system's not working, he rolls over a cyclist, the company's got no leg to stand on. <laughs> Obviously, the cyclist hasn't either, but there you go. Um, yeah, they've got no sort of... I, I guess the insurance companies will say, well, that truck's faulty, you're not insured. So consequently, the haulage company don't want these things putting on there because that means they'll then have to be maintained like every other bit of compulsory technology. And the the, the sheer cost of installing them at all, because apparently it was something like um, 700 quid per truck. Which is very little to a large haulage company. But a lot to a small one. Your Eddie Stobarts of left. the world would um, be able to do it. 
I wouldn't be surprised if Eddie Stobart's not got them on there already. Probably. Um, um, but your your little I mean the guy that the the company that my brother in law works for I think they've got like a dozen trucks, right? Um, and they're not a large company, but um, you're looking at what seven, nearly eight and a half, probably close to ten grand for them to fit that on, which I, I suppose still isn't an awful for lot a of company, money, and for lives is not a lot. Mm. Um, it, it it's. <sighs> I would think that any driver would rather have a tool that's going to let them safely see down the side of their truck than to have somebody's death on their conscience, surely. Um, yeah. Um, it, it's, but the, the way this woman was saying it, that this technology is just too distracting and that it's... Yeah, it's making the guy take his eyes off the road, and it's like no. no I think that's that's frankly just rubbish. It is. I think it's there's possibly rubbish. other valid arguments for not having them, um, but it's another distraction. It's technology. I, that, to me, that just doesn't hold any sort of water, because yeah. the stuff that goes on inside that is those cabs and the stuff that they've got. Um, well, the, the, this is a fairly insignificant piece of technology, in my opinion. The brakes, the steering, the, the whole coupling with the trailer and everything, it's, it's all technology. Yeah. The whole thing is technology on wheels. Yeah. So to say, oh, it's another bit of technology, it's, it's, no. It, uh, and when people do come up with a valid argument against something, fine. But as soon as they throw up something as as random and as vague as... Know, oh, it's new technology, it's not good. <laughs> you, you, their credibility just gets thrown out the window. There's only six miles of bad road between you and I Only six miles of bad road and blue sky If you get out fast you won't feel his breath, you won't catch his eye And I'll count the time and I'll watch the days till he Makes you fly oh, oh, oh. Oh, There's only three feet of shallow water between you and I Oh, it isn't deep, but it's just enough to make sure that I Far, and you'll 
get there fast Cause you're so fragile Will you see his smile Will you taste his song As you vanish by You'll feel his hands And they're cold like bone But they're gone with time So linking in nicely to uh, what we were talking about earlier, that was Jordan Rain and the uh, proximity of death. <laughs> um, Jordan, who is currently doing a tour of most of the pubs around the south of England, I believe. Uh, and tomorrow, most of the pubs in London. In London as well. <laughs> Which, unfortunately, so we will not be going to. Unfortunately, no. Um, finances do not permit. Um, I, I thought last week that things were going to work, but... but uh, Problems have thrown up, so uh, we will be certainly listening to all the podcasts that are going to come out of it, because typically out of the uh, the prod crawl, you get lots of different clips and um, interviews are thrown around. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, Jordan's going to be up there with um, with the, the rest of the podcasters, and I hope they have a good time. Yes. Um, with yours, it was your, your finances, and the, the same for me, really, to be honest, because remember last week, <clears throat> uh, we had a conversation about that, me potentially buying a scooter yes well i've bought a scooter ah you crazy frog you (laughs) 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 were you actually tempted to do that when you're on the bike (laughs) no it makes the sound enough for itself thanks (laughs) so yes i now have my scooter you picked it up today did you i did yes um about six o'clock um must have looked a bit dodgy because I met the bloke in a pub car park and handed over some money and rode off on a bike. <laughs> so <laughs> it was just an expensive pizza. Yeah. <laughs> so um, interesting is is the word I would use. <laughs> How far have you ridden on it? So far, about fifteen miles. Oh, that's still that's still quite a long way for a first ride. Prob- probably a little less. Um, it's it's about. 10 11 12 miles something like that from uh my my house to where i picked the bike up from and i've also ridden around town a couple of times popped up to my sister to show show it off to her yeah. um so yeah probably between 10 and 15 miles so far and um i like it well what i was saying to you last week was about road position and how you you mustn't adopt the the bicycle um hugging the curb apologizing for the fact that you're even on the road um and that that can be difficult especially with the 50 how have you found it um well let, let's start at the beginning shall we <laughs> so i I'm, I'm in the car park i've paid my money i've signed the forms i now own this bike i think i know what's coming <laughs> sorry i think i know what's coming um and started it starts fine oh it did start oh, okay. yeah no 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 no. it's an electric start so well the, the the thing is with most scooters you have to pull the brake while you start it which the guy was kind enough to tell me <laughs> see i wouldn't have told you yeah <laughs> no he was kind enough to tell me i mean he, he did a really good job of showing me around it because he said oh how much experience have you got with these things i said well i've just looked at that one <laughs> Yeah. So uh, he showed me like where the fuel tank was, which yeah. was a good start. Um, you know where you put where your dipstick is, where the where, so where you put the oil in, um, and showed me where all the controls were on the handlebars, yeah. which I would have figured out because well they're pretty good at telling you where they are because I got little symbols on them. Yeah. You know, so it, it wasn't, but he he did show me how to the there yeah, how to start it. Yeah. But. Um, the very first thing, right? 
uh, get on it, start it, um, drop the the stand. So I am now in control of this bike. Uh, revved it and it starts pulling off. Um, the 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 steering on them or lack of the handlebars don't actually turn that far, do they? Uh, because they rely on you leaning to go round corners. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, so, okay, uh, it doesn't have a particularly tight turning circle, put it that way. Right, so, okay. Um, I, I just turned the, the, the handlebars to go towards the exit, and it really didn't turn as far as I thought it would. So, like, shit, driving into a wall. Uh, <laughs> so once I got sort of slowed down and lent and sort of got around that bit, I was okay. The, the thing with that is not necessarily the turning circle, but the bike will go wherever you're looking. So if you're looking, thinking, I'm going to that wall, I'm going to that wall, I'm going to that wall, guess where you're going to end up? <laughs> so, yeah, I, I missed the wall, fine, no problem. Um, it just sort of didn't do quite what I expected it would do, put it that yeah, way. Yeah. Um, wasn't really in any danger of hitting the wall, because it was quite a way away, but it was sort of like, oh, okay, you have to sort of do this instead, you know. Th this is why they make you do the car park training mm. normally before you go out on a bike. Yeah. I, I can believe it, totally believe it. Um, so I, pu I pull out, get onto the road. Now, fortunately, this road is um, a country road that's not particularly well travelled because it's at one end is the middle of nowhere and at the other end is the middle of nowhere. <laughs> so not many cars come through it. Yeah. Which was good because that gave me a good mile of riding with nothing else about me so I could actually get comfortable, get seated and yeah. get used to it, which was brilliant. Yeah. Um, although 200 yards after pulling out, there was a set of temporary traffic lights that I had to stop. That was fun <laughs> because um, keeping your balance when it stopped so you can put your foot down without dropping the thing. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay. Well, you, see, well, you see, you've got to bear in mind, I've never ridden a bike. You've ridden a bicycle, though. I've ridden a bicycle. But it's different. It's the same, but different. There are distinct in, uh, differences between the two. Yeah. yeah. Um, somehow, I think, when pedalling, so you're naturally swaying with the bike as it's pedalling, you're kind of into the rhythm of how it's moving. I'm, I'm not explaining that particularly well. But when you're on a bike that's moving under its own steam and you are essentially sitting on it, um, yeah. I initially felt quite detached from it, yeah, as yeah. opposed to you know actually being part of it and completely controlling it, as, yeah, you know. Um, but once I got past that, then it was quite a long stretch to the next junction, which gave me time to sort of settle into the bike. Yeah. Um, the the two things that sort of hit me were two quite, things hit you, yeah, you for no. like four hours. Um, just quite how exposed you actually are. Yeah. That surprised me. Um, yeah. Possibly felt more exposed on that than I did a bicycle. I don't know why. Whether it's the fact that you're travelling at speed as well as sort of just sitting there. Yeah, um, possibly. So many years. I think it's something that I, I sort of touched on last week. So many years of sitting in a car with a seatbelt on and a big metal cage around you. Yes. Um, now, essentially sitting on a seat with no nothing holding you there other than your hands on the handlebar, felt pretty weird. Yeah. Um, and the wind. Yes. Really quite surprised by how much you get blown about by crosswinds. Yeah. I kind yeah. of knew it would do, but not quite as much as I um, experienced. So what, what kind of speeds were you able to get on that? Uh, 40 downhill. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. And about 15 uphill. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, oh, no, that's that's still pretty good. It is, still, yeah. I'm, yeah. I, I'm really quite happy with. It. I mean, there's a couple of things that were unnerving about it to begin with, but by the time I'd got home, I was loving it. Yeah, I really do enjoy it, and I could see myself using it an awful lot. No, that's good. Um, but the the only worry I do have is the security of it, as in it getting stolen. Yeah, well, I've had two stolen. Yeah. Um, and they were chained up. Granted, they weren't chained to anything, but I had a big hefty chain through the wheel 
and um, and that that didn't deter anybody. Well, what I what I've got is um, a chain that is supposedly hacksaw and bolt crop resistant. How much faith you put in that? Don't know, but that's what it said on the on the packaging. Yeah, um, and a heavy duty um, padlock that yeah. again is supposedly resistant to those sort of things. Um, and I've chained it to the only thing that in my car park that I can chain it to. Your car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, I've got a tow bar on the back of my car. Right. Um, and where the tow bar, tow bar comes out from under the car, it's a split piece of metal. Right. So I've wrapped the chain around that piece of metal and around my bike. Hmm. So it's about as good as it's going to get. What I'm going to do if and when I get rid of the car, I don't know yet. Yeah. Um, no, I say the, the chain on its own, especially with the, the smaller bike like yours, is not enough. Because, okay, it may well be hacksaw proof but anybody who was after that particular bike could stick it into the back of a transit and then take it down to their um shed where they've got an angle grinder yeah or something that's you know it, it, and it's not going to be as obvious if they're in a, a, a proper workshop somewhere grinding it off than if they're in your car park trying to do it yeah um and the, your bike's probably light enough that a couple of guys could lift it up unfortunately um i can lift it myself yeah, I had to. Yeah. When I pulled up alongside my car, um, I couldn't sort of steer it into the gap behind my car to get it right. close enough to the tow bar. Yeah, but um, yeah, if you if you hold on to the excuse, hang on a second, <coughs> excuse me, um, if you hang on to the the pillion, um, the bar behind the the pillion seat, yeah, um, you can actually lift the back wheel off the ground. Yeah, <laughs> so. so Held does on yours to the have handlebars. storage space under the seat? Yes, it does, yeah. That's where the fuel tank is as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's enough room potentially to fit a helmet. Yeah. Um, but that's got like the chain in and the the padlock and that and will carry my lunch in it when I ride to work and things like that. So yes, mm -hmm. tomorrow morning I shall be going to work and I shall be giving it a test run just to see quite how I get on with it. But so far, so uh -huh. good.
Yale Nyang. <laughs> I thought I was going to do it properly, but I can't. That was Yale Name with um. No, where's the where's the notes gone? New soul. <laughs> Chris Hagen. <laughs> New soul. Um, which was the song? Well, I think we say this every time we play it. Which was the song for the um Apple? Which which one was it? It's either the Shuffle or the Nano, wasn't it? No, it wasn't it the. Oh, um, was it the new IMAX? The something. iMac that could fit into a manila envelope. Oh, the air. Wasn't it? I if it fit it in the, the envelope, it was the the Mac Air or whatever it is. Considering we say that every time it plays, <laughs> I should really know, shouldn't I? Um, <laughs> and you can find more music from her at yaleweb.com. That's Y-A-E-L web dot com. And um, tune in again next week for more motorcycle exploits. <laughs> oh, you're getting brave. What's that? Well, normally we say next time. You've just said next week. Well, you said last week that we've got two more weeks before pod crawl and we'll be doing two more recordings. And I'm like, hang on a second. <laughs> yeah, I figured that one out too. <laughs> we may well have uh, like uh, two more weekends. No, we didn't even have two more weekends. Two more Fridays, I think, was the case. Wasn't ah, it? that might have been it, yeah. Because we recorded it on the Thursday. We would have two more Fridays and then it would have been it. But um, yes, we shall be recording next week. <laughs> Unless Lance decides otherwise. <laughs> or I crash my bike. <laughs> or you crash your bike. No, don't, cr- don't, do, don't say that. No. <laughs> or the world ends and we can't. Well, no, we've already already decided that. The world's not ending tomorrow. I'm just building in a cushion in case we forget or something, you know? <laughs> it's, it's just that all those who are, who have seen the light are leaving us to have one last long party. Does that mean we don't have to worry about the explicit tag anymore? <laughs> You can call the Dumbed Down Life crew on 07-092-274-759. You can follow us on Twitter. Our account name is Dumbed Down Life. The email address is ddl.podshow at gmail.com. The website address is www.dumbdownlife.com.